Hey, how's it going? This is John Clark with Kinetic, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about Stream Decks and an ATEM. So, I love using my Stream Decks with an ATEM if I'm cutting cameras or just switching a show in general. I know, hey Jay, how come you're not talking about audio? This is video. Well, don't be a one trick pony. So, I'm going to show you how we can change your preview program. Uh, you could set your autos, cuts, things like that on your Stream Deck. And then at the same time, use a second stream deck to control your auxes. That's how I, I like to kind of set it up is I have preview and my main uh, cuts. And then my auxes are cut from this guy. So you can do that all simultaneously. And hopefully you could take what I show you in this video and then you can adapt that to your own tastes. You can do the same stuff with a 2ME as well. So. Thanks for watching, stay tuned. Remember to like and subscribe. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is access the software controller for the ATEM. And in order to do that, you need to set up a static network and configure your TCP IP settings for the port you're using. Now, if you don't know how to set up a static network to access the software controller, I'm going to show you that in a future video. I'm probably going to make it tomorrow or the next day. When that video is up, you can find the link here. But for the rest of this video, I'm going to assume that you understand how to set up a static network and access the software controller. Anyway, from that point, we're going to move on. All right, so as you can see, I've wiped out my stream decks and here's a view of my ATEM. And the first thing I'm going to do on my computer is I'm going to launch the software controller. And like I said, if you don't know how to network in and get to the actual GUI, I'll show you that in a different video. But if this populates, then I know that my ATEM is connected to my laptop. So that's a good sign. We, we can get in here and we know that that is working good. The next thing we're gonna do is launch the companion app. Come on. It's a web-based GUI. I'm gonna get rid of these. And I'm going to Blackmagic ATEM. Now it wants a target IP. So this is the same IP that we have used to get into the GUI to connect our ATEM to things. So Mine happens to be 192.168.2.240. I'm going to apply. When I go back into instances, this should say OK. Big green OK means we have done that right. And companion is now talking to our ATEM. Let's add some buttons. So if I go into presets and I click on this, there's lots of things here for us. So Preview, I can grab, we'll do cam one, cam two, cam three. And in program, we're gonna go, see if, if I accidentally drop one there too, I can just go over that with camera two, and it'll replace it. Camera one, camera two, camera three. Now, if you look, as I've dropped those, they've populated on my stream deck. Now, I need to have my uh, transitions and cuts put in here. So, also in presets, if I go to transitions, our auto is right here. And we could try that real quick. So, camera three. And you can see this now switching. I have hard cuts here for program and preview. Camera two, so go there, camera three. Cool. Now, what if you want some cuts? Well, if we go back into here and I look at my macros, where you at macros, first thing in the macros is cut. 
So I can now in preview camera one, cut, cut back and forth, camera two, camera one, and then once again, auto, and that works great. I'm going to exit this GUI. Now with companion, you always wanna kinda of have that run in the background, so we're going to hide that. And I'm once again going to launch the ATEM software control. And we're gonna double check this here. So I don't have any monitors going, so you can't see it, but if it reflects it in the ATEM controller, then it's going to happen in reality. So as you can see here, uh, camera two is red, camera one is green. As you can see on my stream deck, uh, camera two is red and camera one is green. But then my auto, if you watch the T-bar, and we can obviously change the rate of the T-bar and then have the fade or cut. And if you look in the green previews, those are selected there and my hard cuts change as well. So that's simple. You guys could build off of this. You could put whatever you want from your, your keys to all your inputs to color bars, whatever the, that. This is just kind of the basics of it. But I wanna show you another thing and that is on this other Stream Deck I got, the ability to run your auxes. So I'm going to minimize the software controller and we're gonna go back into Companion. By going to my buttons, I'm now gonna to go to a new page. I'm gonna to go to presets and we'll start with aux, aux one. And I'm gonna put, so you guys can see this, we'll do bars and we'll do color. Color one, color two. Now, this stream deck is on page one. This stream deck is on page two. And if you look on the screen, page one, page two. This stream deck is running page two. This stream deck is running page one. Now, if I get out of here, and I go back into my software controller, you can see that page one, still no problem taking care of previewing program. But if you look at my ATEM here in the window for my auxes, we have color bars. So I could do these at the same time. Um, set up your static network, get hooked in, check with the software controller. If the software controller is working, that same IP address that you use to launch software controller, you're gonna put into the target IP within companion and you can use the presets in there for pretty much most stuff and then maybe get creative and start coming up with your own macros and workflows and find us some unique things. Let me know in the comments if you, if you got something cool or maybe if there's something I missed that, that you found out or, or a workflow kind of scenario that you thought was really awesome. I'm a huge nerd and I love stream decks. Again, thanks for watching. I'm Jay and have a great day. Remember to like and subscribe.